In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we come together to celebrate the Holy Eucharist. We come to remember and celebrate the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ and himself as a sacrifice to redeem us. And as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist, we continue to pray for people who are uh, suffering because of this uh, pandemic, for those who are sick, for the gift of healing, for those who have died, for the gift of eternal life. And we also pray in a special way for Clementia Villa Diego. We pray for, she's remembered on her birthday. We pray for the eternal repose of her soul. To be less and worthy for this celebration, we now humble ourselves before the Lord. We are aware of our weaknesses and our sins. We ask the Lord for the gift of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. So our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. What you have come to is nothing known to the senses, not a blazing fire or a gloom turning to total darkness or a storm or trumpeting thunder or the great voice is speaking which made everyone that heard, heard it beg that no more should be said to them. The whole scene was so terrible that Moses said, I am afraid and was trembling with fright, but what you have come to is Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, where the millions of angels have gathered for the festival. With the whole chart in which everyone is a firstborn son and a citizen of heaven, you have come to God himself, the supreme judge, and been, and been placed with the spirit of the saints who had been made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator, who brings a new covenant and a blood for purification, which pleads more insistently than a bear's. The word of the Lord. Yes. God, in your temple, we ponder your love. God, in your temple, we ponder your love. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion, through fall of the earth, the great king's city. God in the midst of its citadels has shown himself its stronghold. God As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of our God, in the city of the Lord of hosts, which God upholds forever. O God, we ponder your love within your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches to the ends of the earth. With justice, your right hand is filled. Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is near. Believe the good news. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus made a tour round the villages, teaching. Then he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no heavy sack, no coppers for their purses. They were to wear sandals, but he added, Do not take a spare tunic. And he said to them, If you enter a house anywhere, stay there until you leave the district. And if any place does not welcome you and people refuse to listen to you, as you walk away, shake off the dust from under your feet as a sign to them. So they set off to preach repentance, and they cast out many devils and anointed many sick people with oil and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Something striking in the Gospel reading, of course, is the uh, one with the uh, instruction not to take anything with them. And, uh, well, uh, that is uh, an instruction to emphasize that what is important to take with them, as they were said to preach the good news, is the good news. That's the most important thing, so that uh, they will focus more on that. That really matters. The others, well, they are secondary. And to take nothing. It's not that they, could, they have no needs. Of course, they have their needs. But again, they have to rely also on the generosity of people. They have to rely on the providence of God. And that is precisely the fruit of the word that they carry with them. In other words, they are rich in as much as they have the word with them. And things can be provided, they can be beneficiaries of generosity of people who are converted to the Lord when they receive them in their homes, and they can also have their basic needs uh, addressed or uh, uh, shared by, uh, given by those uh, people that need. So that is actually a kind of uh, trust in divine providence. So again, the instruction not to carry anything is of course to focus on the word of God. That's the most essential thing in the journey. And of course, to, to rely on God's providence and even God's providence through people who will welcome them and will give them their basic needs. This gives us an insight. Well, uh, we always have that when we travel. As you always say, travel light. And that is precisely uh, true. Uh, it's not easy to travel with all the baggages. We, we uh, can travel easily with uh, just the essential things we need. But also it gives us an insight that we, our life as a journey as we travel through life. It's also uh, an instruction to travel light in life's journey. Well, we get baggages along the way. We get hurt. We get, uh, uh, we, we lament because of death of loved one, for example. These are the baggages we carry. That's why there is a need to even that to let go we have expressed our sorrow, and we let go, and we can move on. Perhaps we can. We might be hurt in our relationship with people. Perhaps some people would not forgive us for something like that. Sometimes we have to let go. Let the reality itself it happen. If you cannot do anything more than that, then let go. It's just to. Uh, to travel light, to not carry all the burdens. But also it reminds us to let go of our of other burdens, vices, bad habits. Because otherwise we've got all these things to carry with us. And perhaps even our some of our material possessions. 
if that would uh, become a burden to us, then perhaps we let go of that so that we can focus more on the Word of God, on the message. In other words, it is a reminder also to us that when we travel through life, we decide, we deserve and decide which ones are essentials in life, which one is the basic thing in life, and of course the Word of God as the basic thing. Other things that hinder us to live according to the Word of God, or to live a happy life, or to live a good life, they become a burden to us in our journey. And so it is a reminder to us to let go of things that could hinder us in our happy journey, in our life's journey towards God. And as we continue to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, we ask the Lord to help us, to inspire us, so that we will always discern which one is essential in life and we can travel light with His grace, with His providence. And uh, also the Holy Mass reminds us as a letter to the Hebrews, Jesus Himself even let go of His own life as a sacrifice for all of us, for our salvation. And so we praise and thank God for that and we commemorate what Jesus has done celebrate his love as we continue the Holy Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for us through your goodness we have received this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for us through your goodness we have received this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Praise the God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice on yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as we joy, we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. How sound the highs. Blessed is you, come as in the name of the Lord. How sound. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Vincent our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form, by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming for our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Spirit here. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the called to the supper of the Lamb.
to those at home, you may join in this communion prayer. And Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things. I always desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come into my heart. I embrace you. I believe you are already there. And I always unite myself wholly to you. May I never be separated from you. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.